Hello, I am Kaveri Saxena and I am presenting a seminar on dependency injection with Unity Container. I am working with Manpy since 1st July 2013. I am working here as a Windows desktop application developer. My Skype ID is MFSI Kaveri's and my email ID is kaveri's at the rate mindfysolutions.com. That's all about me. So let's start with the seminar. The agenda of the seminar is to get familiar with the concept of DI. Why we should use DI? What is constructor injection? What is setter injection? And what is interface injection? Then a little overview about DI containers and a simple demo showing how to implement dependency injection with Unity container. So now we should get started with overview of dependency injection. What is dependency injection? According to the Wikipedia, it is a software design patterns that allow the removal of hard-coded dependencies and makes it possible to change them whether at runtime or compile time. Means the focus is on removing hard-coded dependencies. Mark Seaman has also given a definition that it is a principle and pattern that enable us to develop loosely coupled code. So, before discussing how dependency injection help us to develop loosely coupled code, I would like to give a brief idea about tightly coupled code. Suppose we have two form, two classes, class A and class B. Class A wants to use the functionality of class B. So, what class A is supposed to do? Class A will create the object of class B and will call the functions of class B. Things are going fine over here. We have done everything to satisfy our requirements. But what if class B changes or if class A wants to use another class instead of using class B? Here the problem arrives and for changing the class we have to change the dependent class as well. Here the role of dependency injection comes into play. Before moving further, I would like to introduce you to the demo I am using in this seminar for making you understand about DI. I have created four projects in a solution, application view, common object, CSV service, running app. Running app is a bootstrapper application that is used to run our application view. It contains program.cs that is just running our application that is person form. Now come to our application view. In our application view, we have a person form which deals with the UI, which contains buttons, which performs CRUD operation, a form and a grid to display data. Here we are using a service, a CSV service repository. Now what is CSV service repository? CSV service repository is a simple service file or is a simple class file which deals with the text file to perform CRUD operation in a text file. Everything is going fine. We have everything. Here we have one more project that is common object. It contains the model which is shared among all the projects. That's why we have named it common objects. So we have clearly understood our project. The one thing we have application view which are, deals with our UI, common object that contains our employee model, the properties which has to be used around all over the project, CSV service, the service file which deals with the, which performs the CRUD operation over text file and our running app which is running our application view. Now let's run the application. Everything is going fine. We have fetched the data. And now add a new entry, ASHZ, something like this, salary, designation, okay and add. Now again fetch the data, and we have successfully added a new entry in our text file. Now close the application. Now. Here we come to our next slide, why to use DI. Now, when we have created this application, 
Our form is tightly coupled with CSV service repository. Means our form has to use the CSV service repository. And if any change is done in CSV service repository, then it also affect our form, person form. And suppose everything is going fine, but our client requirement changes, and he want to use SQL service instead of using comma separated value. Then what? If the code is tightly coupled, if we are not using dependency injection, then whole the person form has to be changed. Wherever we were using. CSV service, we have to change it with SQL service. But with DI, we just need to change it only once and it is done in whole the project. This is what dependency injection is. Creation and binding of the dependency outside the class. That depends on it. Now we come to why to use DI. For extensibility. The same thing, if we want to use another class, we can easily attach it to the project. Testability, suppose our application is working on WCF service. And so to test our application, WCF service must be running. But if the application is loosely coupled, you need not to run the WCF application. You have the code, you can inject any other dependency and can check the code that it provides testability, late binding. This is the most important feature of dependency injection. In dependency injection, you need not to add the reference before, but you can add the reference as at runtime as well. You just need to change the config file and it will take it itself. This is the beauty of using dependency injection, parallel development. If the code is not tightly coupled, as being a developer, everyone knows that if the code is not tightly coupled, then anyone can use and anyone can develop it in their own system. And then it can be merged. Maintainability. Obviously, one module will, is not going to reflect the other module, so it is easy to maintain a loosely coupled code in comparison to maintaining a tightly coupled code. So. Here we come towards constructor injection. Now we'll show how to implement dependency injection by constructor. In constructor injection, we pass dependency into dependent class via constructor. We'll show it how. We have our application over here. We have tightly coupled our form to CSV service repository. So the main objective of dependency injection is to remove tight coupling is to free the dependent class from being dependent into service. So first we have to create an interface. Here in the solution, we'll add a new project. I've already created that project. I will add that project, iService repository. Okay. I have added this project. In this project, contains signature of CRUD operation methods, get employee, insert employee, delete employee, update employee. Now, first we'll implement our interface through CSV service. First of all, the first thing we have to do is to add a reference of interface to all the projects which are using it because the interface is the only thing our dependent class will using now it is it has no direct connection to our services it will be implementing only interface and that interface and our dependency injector will inject the concrete type to that interface only so here we'll add the reference to application view first we'll remove the reference of csv service we no, no longer need this now. We'll add the reference of iService repository in application view, in our boot app, strapper application. iService repository, 
and in our CSV servers. Our CSV service is going to implement that interface. See how. This is our CSV service and now this will implement our interface. It will it collapse it to definition and we will see we have all four methods which are used in interface are implemented in our CSV service repository. So now we are done with our CSV service class. We will save it and close. Now in person form class, we will remove this dependency as we have removed the reference of CSV service. That's why it's showing red. We will remove this dependency. I service repository dot I service repository. We will create an object repository that's it now we have freed our dependent class from the service now this is all to be done in person form and this is all to be done in our csv service but we have we still have not injected our dependency up now we are talking about constructor injection so the first thing we have to do is to create a constructor we'll create a constructor over here public Person form. Here we have I service. As we have to inject our dependency through this constructor, so we have created a constructor with parameter of i service repository and we initialize this repository to our main repository which will be used to which will be using for calling functions now here we have done now in our program.cs in our bootstrapper application we will be passing our dependency first we will call it first we will creating a service We have to add the reference of CSV service and all other service which we want to use later. New CSV service. We have added the reference and now we have created an object of service which is using CSV service repository. We will pass this as a parameter over here. Now we have injected the dependency by this service. Now person form we have this constructor and in this constructor we are injecting the dependency through our application form, through our running application. Here we have to write this as to initialize the components to call this constructor so as to get the form. Now we'll run the application, hope so. So we have we didn't get any error. And now we will fetch the data and the data is coming. That means our project is working fine and we have successfully implemented constructor injection over here. This is all about constructor injection. Constructor injection is the most popular injection in DI. And many people think that it is the only way to implement dependency. But we have other ways also. Here we come towards setter injection. What setter injection does, it creates a test setter on the dependent class. Here we have created a setter and this setter is used to set the dependency. We will show you this by application but before showing this by application, one thing to remind is that in constructor injection, you could not create an object of the class without passing a dependency but in setter injection you can create the object of class of dependent class and can use the functions of dependent class without passing dependency and can use dependency later but there is a risk as well 
मे बी इफ यू आर नॉट पासिंग डिपेंडेंसी बिफोर देन देर इज अ रिस्क ऑफ यूजिंग दोज फंक्शन विच आर यूजिंग डिपेंडेंसी एंड देट विल रिजल्ट इन एनी एक्सेप्शन सो यू हैव टू हैंडल दैट एक्सेप्शन बिफोर using setra injection so now let's see how we will use our setra injection over here we'll comment this now we have to create a setter first we will create a setter a property setter public now i have shown you how to inject the dependency but now i will show you how to change the projects means what's the use of dependency injection if you if you are depending on the same class so here we have here we will add a new project for using sql service suppose if our client wants to use sql service add a new project i have already created that project sql service in this class we are implementing the same interface i service repository which is implementing the same function get employee insert employee delete employee and update employee now we'll see how we will inject this class in our dependent class so here we have created a property for set injection now in our program.cs we'll add the reference of sql service as well as to so here we have removed the constructor that's why it's showing an error okay so here we have created the service now we'll call that setter property repository and we'll set our dependency we have set the dependency now we'll run the function the function is still working fine this is the way to implement set injection so simple we just need to to create a property and then call that property to implement or to inject our dependency now suppose we want to use other service sql service sql service repository now we'll run the function still the data is coming and we can see the data is changed now we are using sql repository for calling the data that means it is very easy with dependency injection to change classes or to use different services with the same project we need not to do any changes in the project we just have to change our bootstrap application and that's it this is about setter injection now we'll come to interface injection it is the least popular way to implement dependency injection and very few people know about this it is same as the setter injection in this also first we create the object of dependent class and then pass the dependency in this what we do is we create an interface to inject the dependency how to set the dependency so in our project we'll see how first we have to create an interface so in our i service repository we have already created an interface i inject i have given this name as to be clear that it is for using dependency or it is for use for de injecting dependency here we have a method to inject our dependency i inject so now we will implement this interface in our person form class i service repository dot i inject this is showing an error as we have to implement its members so implement members here we have this method and what we are going to do we'll set our 
repository to repository. We'll remove this property and we'll make it a normal one. So here we have implemented an interface I inject and implemented its member. So we are done with our pro person form. Now in our program.cs we have created our form. Now we have to use inject method to inject this dependency. That's it. We have created the service. We have created the service, we have created the form and called the function of dependent class inject to inject that service. This is what interface injection is. We have created the interface and implemented its function to inject dependency. Now we will run the application and we can see that it's working perfectly and we will fetch the data, the data is coming. So we are going good. And then if we'll change this repository, make it CSV and run, still the data is coming in, the data is different. So we are able to change repositories very easily. Now I have told about constructor injection, setter injection, interface injection to implement dependency or to set the dependency. Now we'll move towards DI containers. DI containers can be set as a framework for doing dependency injection. The basic functionality of IOC container is to implement dependency injection. It can also maintain the lifetime of the object. Suppose you ask for an interface to resolve it to complete type container will set up file and will resolve that dependency. Most of the popular IOC container performs the same function. Here we have our DI container. DI container knows about dependent class, our interface and services we are using. But dependencies does not know about each other. Neither this class person form is knowing about what type or how many types of dependency it has but when the dependency injected it will use the functions of that class we have many ioc containers in market as unity minject castle windsor autofac structure map spring.net and many others but we have chosen unity container for implementing our demo just for the sake of convenience and it is a product from Microsoft and it is available as free download. As it is a product of Microsoft so it is widely, it is popular and can be used widely. So here for using a Unity container you have to download compatible version of Unity in your bootstrapper application. I have down we have uh, right now we have uh, from the managed nuget pa package we can see that we have the version number three but with visual studio 2010 with this application we can use unity version 2.1.505.2 i will show you how from here tools nuget package manager and package manager console it is initializing we can if we have that compatible version same over here in the manage nuget package we can we could have directly downloaded downloaded it from ui but for this for different version we have to download it from package manager console here we have to get get project running app install version 2.1.505.2 here we see install unity unity 
version so we are done we have some error over here ok we have not written package over here so we will write install package and then we will run the command still we are getting an error we have to remove the space between package so we have successfully installed our unity 2.1.505.2 in our running application here we can see that we have two references over here microsoft.practice.unity and microsoft.practices.unity.configuration for normal for our purpose we just need practice.unity practice.unity.configuration is needed when we have to when we want our unity container to take the configuration out of xml file which is used in late binding unity also provides a lifetime management of the object feature so here we will see how we are going to use our unity we have created our service we have created our form and we will remove this from here and from our person form as well now we don't need any manual dependency injection we need this constructor to implement dependency so we'll comment it out so we have this constructor over here now in program.cs we'll be using unity first we will creating a container where container container is equal to you new unity container new container so here we have created an object of container of unity container that is container now the first thing for using unity is to we have to register a service the config type which a container resolver interface to means container will be registering our i service repository to our sql service repository now the first thing we have done for using unity container is to create an object of container then we have registered our interface or our abstraction to a concrete type then we will call our function then it will look towards the interface and will check to which concrete type will it resolve our interface to so here we are done then we will resolve our person form now that's it we will remove this service object and we'll copy it over here so it will be using only this now hopefully keep the finger crossed that app our application will run here we see that our application is running and when we click on fetch data it's working properly now we'll change our repository we'll make it csv service repository and we'll again run this application and again it's working fine and we can see the data is fetched from text file so this is the beauty of unity containers you need not to pass the constructor over here you need not to tell unity which constructor it has to invoke it already has done this first it will resolve person form the unity picks up the most complex con 
most complex constructor. We have two constructor over here. Person formed with one parameter passed and another with default with no parameters. But a unity has chosen the constructor with single parameter. Now, when it has resolved the dependency of the single parameter, then it came to our concrete type i service repository and it has seen that for that it has registered csv service repository and then it will go deep into the csv service repository it will find only one single constructor over there so it will implement that csv service repository in the place of interface i service repository and our application is working totally fine we are we were not using unity containers earlier in this demo because it hides a lot of things and for starting an application or for learning dependency injection first when you will be doing things manually you will have more idea about dependency injection rather than using unity container but for a long term or for using it in a real world application unity container must be used because you cannot maintain it manually the because there is only one dependency but there can be nested dependency and it is very difficult to maintain them manually so it is suggested or it is advised to use unity containers or to use any other di containers all work same sim most of in most of the cases they are same but but there is just a little of difference between the syntax used for the containers so UI IOC containers must be used for implementing a large time application. So here we are done with our Unity containers. This is all from my side and a thank you very much for listening to me. All the very best and get started with the Unity containers.